Russian space agency Roscosmos recently released visuals from RKK Energia at the end of October, where Yuri Borisov, the chief of Russia's State Space Corporation, conducted a meeting that focused on the progress of the Russian orbital station, ROS. Nevertheless, the photographs of the prototype of the potential Russian spacecraft, ORL, were the ones that captured the public's attention. The Soyuz spacecraft is currently employed for trips to the International Space Station. It continues to be the most appropriate method of transporting cosmonauts to and from orbit, despite its advanced age. It has consistently demonstrated reliability, has endured over six upgrades, and has transitioned to digital technology. Nevertheless, there are certain deficiencies that cannot be rectified through small modifications. The descent module's small internal volume is a significant concern. Cosmonauts are seated in close proximity to one another, which can be uncomfortable during extended flights or when descending in water. In the latter scenario, they are required to remove their spacesuits and don specialized wetsuits in a relatively confined space. Imagine attempting to accomplish this in a Mini Cooper cabin that lacks access to the rear seat. The Soyuz spacecraft had been created for a mid-range R-7 rocket, which is why it has a diameter of 2.25 meter. Development of the next-generation crew transportation vehicle, initially called Orel, commenced in 2009 for a heavy rocket with a diameter of 4.4 meter. In comparison, Boeing's CST-100 Starliner has a diameter of 4.5 meter and Crew Dragon has a diameter of 4 meter. It is intended for a four-person crew. Another disadvantage of the Soyuz is its single-use design. Orel attempts to resolve this issue by including reusable components into the new spacecraft, comparable to those produced by Boeing and SpaceX. The spacecraft has been in development for 15 years for a variety of reasons. Although this may appear to be a long list, it is worthwhile to evaluate alternative international initiatives. Additionally, the CST-100, which was in development for 14 years, was responsible for transporting astronauts to the International Space Station in June, but was unable to return them due to technical difficulties. The American-European Orion spacecraft is also still in the process of being developed. Despite being in development since 2006, it has not yet conducted a manned mission, despite having flown to space. The prototypes shown in the photographs are intended for static testing. They show the propulsion section and thermal shield, as well as one of the three payload fairing panels. The return module's vibration strength testing prototype appears to be more assembled. Effectively, this model will function as a completely functional spacecraft that is used to evaluate intricate assembly points with the primary objective of ensuring that it can withstand the vibrations of rocket engines during launch. The Orel spacecraft will be composed of two primary components, the propulsion section and the return module. Reuse will be limited to the return module. A similar design with a detachable single-use section is employed by Boeing's CST-100 Starliner and Crew Dragon. Nevertheless, the Russian spacecraft will descend in a manner that is distinct from that of its international counterparts. Its landing legs, or more precisely, landing support devices, are its most distinctive characteristic. Orel will be the first spacecraft to implement a landing system of this nature, which will enable the return module to be utilized on numerous occasions. Upon descent, the solid fuel landing engines will reduce the speed under the parachute and metallic legs will deploy to shield the spacecraft from damage and cushion the landing. The Soyuz spacecraft that is presently in use is not entirely single-use. The descent module descends gently as a result of the six soft landing engines. The cosmonauts are pulled out, and the spacecraft is subsequently transported to RKK Energia in Moscow for the purpose of testing and reusing its electronics. Customized seats are also reused for each cosmonaut. The descent modules are primarily donated to museums and other public locations. If you observe one on exhibit, you can be certain that the contents are not reusable. Regrettably, there are no publicly accessible images of the interior of Orel. Additionally, there is no information available regarding the arrangement of seats, controls, or the design of facilities, such as the lavatory. The final design of Orel is anticipated to differ from the model currently on display at the Space Museum in Kaluga. Nevertheless, 
the images suggest that the spacecraft is making progress, which gives rise to the possibility that it will be completed in the near future. The Orel is technically capable of transporting four cosmonauts to the ISS, or ROS, and is also in a position to participate in future Russian lunar missions. In addition to the photographs from RKK Energia, there are additional indicators that suggest the imminent testing of Orel. The Angara rocket launch complex at the Vostochny Cosmodrome is currently undergoing modifications, and comprehensive tests were successfully conducted in August. The service apparatus for the new crewed spacecraft underwent autonomous tests on October 25th, which concluded another series of tests. A new assembly and testing facility for heavy-class space apparatus is currently under construction at Vostochny. This facility will also be responsible for the preparation of Orel and ROS modules. Additionally, Orel has been assigned a new landing site. Rather than the Orenburg region, which was the original proposal, it will now be located in the Amur region, near the town of Blishny Sakhalin, to accommodate returns from both the ISS and Raus. These developments indicate that the new reusable Russian crewed spacecraft may shortly make its inaugural spaceflight and subsequently land on its own. Now, do you think Russia is more advanced in manned spaceships? Let us know in the comments. Please like and share our videos and subscribe to our channel. Please also take membership of our channel to encourage us.